Yo, what's good guys? Another video here. Today we got why Europe is insanely well designed. Now, before we get into this video, I want to give a massive shout out and respect to another reactor on here, the Eclectic Beard, because I saw he did this video and I was like, hey yo, this sounds interesting. So I just literally clicked on his video, went to the description, clicked to this link, and here we are. So we're watching this, but I like to give credit when I like, you know, pretty much take ideas from other reactors you know like it's always fair i think it's fair at least but hey yeah let's get to it map of Europe's mass transit railway system across 33 countries. The yellow lines indicate the presence of a train line, and as you can see, it's very dense. There are hardly any spaces where there isn't any coverage for railways. Now, if we compare this to a map of railroad tracks in the US, it's a different story. While parts of the US have some good mass transit, there are large areas of the country which isn't covered by Amtrak, the nation's largest passenger railroad service. But let me show you another map I'm all right off the tops I'm gonna I wonder if he gets into this but my guess for the reason behind that is every time I hear from you know you guys because that's where I learn most the most about Europe is through the people in my comments you guys always talk about how much more you use public transportation whereas here in the US people mostly just drive in their own cars or use buses so like the railroad really isn't a main stake in you know traveling compared to how it seems to be out there so that is a huge part of the reason for that but I wonder if he gets into that this time of high-speed rail in Europe. Now obviously, high-speed railways aren't going to be as common as regular speed railways as they require excellent design, strict planning and massive investment. And yet, as we can see, high-speed rail is present in Europe, which is a stark contrast to the US, as you can see from this map. While the US does have some higher speed rail, like the Aquila line in the Northeastern Corridor, it's hardly an effective map of transport solutions. And the Aquila line isn't really that fast either. It can reach about 150 miles per hour, but averages less than 70. This is not the case for Europe's insanely well designed railroad system. And you have to remember that Europe's system accomplishes this while spanning 33 different nations in a very diverse continent. And I know what you're probably thinking. This is just because Europe is smaller than the United States, which simply isn't true. While the European Union is smaller than the US, continental Europe has an area that is about 1.04 times as much as the US. So we can dismiss this argument that the United States can't be that well designed because it's too big. Europe Again, as I was saying before, I think it just comes down to like, I feel like once cars began, you know, being invented and all that, I feel like the rest of the world, they kind of stuck to, you know, the trains and, you know, working on that, where largely out here, I think that was stopped, and I'm not going to say it was fully stopped, but it was not the focus, which is why we have, you know, such big highway systems and all of that, which I don't know if you guys have that as well. You very well could. I don't know, on the count of never being there. So that is my theory. <laughs> But let me know, you know, if anybody is actually knowledgeable or, you know, we're only a minute into this video, so maybe this will get addressed in this video. But if anyone's knowledgeable on that, fill your boy in. Europe simply is better designed. But if you're American, you might not understand why railroad tracks or public transport as a whole is so important. I mean, driving a car works I fine, why it's right? Well, no. And Europe showcases why a primary focus on private transportation is so detrimental to a well-functioning transit system. Look at these maps. They show the US road network versus the EU's. And as you can see, the EU's road network is not nearly as impressive as the US's. And yet, when you look at some of the most congested cities in the world, can European work versus this. the- Can we look at like how insane <laughs> like over here is? Then when you compare it to over here, <laughs> like it's actually crazy the difference between like split right down the middle. You know, like around here is Illinois. It's my state. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, the, it seems that's actually kind of surprising for me because I lived like you know, North Carolina, which is around here somewhere. I'm not going to point out exactly where it is just because it's around there somewhere. It doesn't really matter exactly where. <laughs> but, uh, 
Anyway, in North Carolina, from growing up here when I moved out there, it seemed so much more, like, country to me and, like, less built up than... So I'm kind of surprised how it looks like the area where North Carolina's in is so much more roadworks and all that compared to Illinois, which is more around here. Interesting. I'm sorry. I know that's completely off topic. I just went on a little tangent there. <laughs> EU's. And as you can see, the EU's road network is not nearly as impressive as the US's. And yet, when you look at some of the most congested cities in the world, European countries don't feature particularly prominently in the global rankings. This is pretty shocking and impressive as the US's. And yet, when you look at some of the most congested cities in the world, European countries... To, to be fair, not America, not America, not America, not the USA, 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 and not the USA. You you can't you can't use that as a reason on why you know now of course I know this isn't exactly Europe versus the US, but he was talking about how poorly designed our roads are. Then he goes to the most congested cities. You can't use that as a point on why private transportation is bad when not as... Honestly, Russia's not doing very good on there. But, like, you get me? Please don't. Like, you can't use that on why our system is bad. Again, I'm more looking at it as USA versus Europe as being a American. But, you know... Yeah. <laughs> feature particularly prominently in the global rankings. This is pretty shocking information because you'd assume that the country with a more expansive road network has a lot less congestion, especially considering the United States has devoted lots of time and money to their highways. So. But we're not on there. You can't. <laughs> what? Like, I'm sorry. Like, he's making great points. That's the thing. I can't fully disagree with what he's saying because he makes great points. But at the same time, we're not on we're not on the top ten list either. So you how are you gonna say that like that makes no sense? Come on, man. Like I'm actually liking this video, but that one right there makes no sense. So how come Europe is less congested when they have fewer roads? Well, it all comes down to disincentivizing less the use of Less, yeah, less cars, less people moving, you know, public or private transportation. So obviously it's less congested, which is why I'm saying he's making a great point. But we're, it's just the way he went about it. It's just, I don't know. Unless I'm being stupid and I literally missed a fucking city. Of cars and most importantly, making an attractive alternative. Europe does this by having both private and public transportation infrastructure, which technically the US has as well, it's just a lot worse. But on top of this, Europe makes it pretty expensive to buy, own and use a car. This is achieved by having high taxes on vehicles and gasoline. In fact, here's a map of worldwide gasoline prices. As you can see, European nations are in the top rankings, while the US lies at the bottom, charging very little. Let's but let me go. be very clear, Slow it's only prices. a good idea to make it expensive to drive a car if you have an attractive alternative, which America doesn't, but Europe does. I mean, obviously this wouldn't work in the US with its current transportation infrastructure, but in Europe, this is a great strategy because you make the roads less congested for those who actually need them and get- uh, Another thing that you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, but it seems like you guys are like with your cities, you guys are so much more close together. Like, I was talking with people from multiple different countries in Europe, and they all will tell me how, uh, say, like, they go, like, four to ten minutes, and they're in another big place. Whereas, where I'm at, the biggest city that's closest to me is, like, 20 minutes out, roughly, give or take a little bit, including traffic and all that, probably... Giving traffic and everything else to get to downtown, probably 25 minutes, being honest. And that's like, then the other biggest city is maybe, I don't know, like 15 minutes, which isn't too big of a city, but as close to big city outside of the other one as you can get, then like 
the other two directions, there's just nothing out there for hours. So, where it, I don't feel like you guys have that as much compared to us. So I feel like that's another reason why, like, for example, the small town I live in, there is no need for a train station to come to a town who has less than 1,000 people in it. It has less than, like, 5,000 last time I looked. And I highly doubt it's changed. So, like, there, I feel like that's another reason why, like, private transportation here is so much bigger than it is out there. Give everyone else an affordable and efficient alternative, being Europe's amazing public transport. And again, because I always like to just throw in there, because I think it's hilarious, but it's very stupid when people are like, look at you trying to justify shit about, like, bro, I'm just giving the reasons I think of why things are like that, so do not think I'm trying to justify everything, huh? I'm just giving my reasons, huh? You guys don't owe me any justification, and I do not owe you any justification, huh? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Like the trains on the railways. This is- How do I say that? Every tuck- Every ticken? Every tuck on? Every tuck- I- You know what? I apologize to whatever language that's in, because I just totally disrespected y'all, but I hope I was close. Arguably the better strategy, because even though the vast majority of Americans have access to vehicles at around 91% and gas is comparatively cheap, it still leaves 9% who don't have access to vehicles. What are these people who can't afford a car supposed to do? I mean, sometimes public transport isn't even an option, or is simply nice. too expensive for many. So you've now actively excluded those who aren't exactly the most well off from society. To make matters worse, some US cities actually got rid of their public transport to make room for more cars. I'm not joking, American streetcars like trams were actually removed to make way for bigger roads. Not just that, but the amount of like, not even removed, but like abandoned tracks that you see that haven't been used in like so many years out here is insane or like dilapidated like old bridges for trains like i'll see it all the time whenever i'm going across rivers like there's like in the distance you see like an old bridge falling apart that hasn't been used in like at least the 19 years i've been alive that i've you know been around an area to see <laughs> so it's it's definitely interesting and crazy absolutely insane. Compare that to Oslo, Berlin, and Madrid, where discussions are underway to restrict or even exclude most cars from the city center. And let's not forget that when you have cars, you also need somewhere to park them. And this is where things start to become rather ridiculous. You see, the United States has 2 billion parking spaces for 250 million cars. That's 8 parking spaces per vehicle. In Europe, it's pretty much a one-to-one -one with around 250 million public parking spaces for for 300 million cars but it must be so annoying to like find that's probably another reason people use private transportation like it, i'm at private i'm getting it mixed up public listen if i get it mixed up you know what i meant i'm sorry but like that must be another reason because that would i know me personally that would be driving me crazy looking for a spot but to emphasize the ridiculousness of this even further, the area that the US dedicates for car parking is actually larger than the area dedicated for housing people. It's oh, honestly damn. unbelievable that people are being squeezed out of American cities due to regulators wanting to make more room for parking spaces. This simply wouldn't fly in the EU, as it has a whole policy dedicated to improving urban planning. See, the EU spent 115 billion euros between 2014 and 2020 to improve city design by making it smarter, greener and more connected. Simply meaning they allocated funds to make their cities more efficient, more connected and better for the environment. And better for the environment they really are. As the average resident in a typical western US city such as Los Angeles or Phoenix contributes approximately six times more carbon to the atmosphere per capita than an average European city resident. This is purely the result of not having effective transport solutions, which saves resources and allows people to move about efficiently. And exactly that, moving about efficiently is something most of Europe's citizens are able to do as a result of the European Union. See, most of Europe's nations are in the European Union, which gives the EU citizens a number of perks, which includes a free travel area. This has been one of the most important achievements of the EU, as it makes it possible for an EU citizen to travel freely to other EU member states and stay for up to three months. 
All they need is a passport or even just an ID card. No visas, no trips to embassies, no form filing, just head straight over. This makes it incredibly easy to travel, study, and and that's probably why your guys' railroads are so, you know, well connected with each other because of interesting, very interesting. And work in other countries and communities and having this level of centralization is very important to good design as it gives the smartest people the opportunity to work where they are most useful. And since good design obviously requires a lot of complicated problem solving and planning, this is very smart. Another smart thing is the incredible biking infrastructure we see in Europe, perfectly illustrated by this map of bike path density in Europe. All the purple lines are bike paths, and there's clearly a lot of them, especially towards the left side of the map, but that's just because this is the home of the Dutch, the Netherlands. Now, the funny thing is, I won't be able to compare this to a map- Why... Why does the Netherlands have so much more- Like, he said just because it's the home of the Dutch, and- why? Like, genuinely, why? Fill me in. Fill me in, y'all. Like, I need to know. Why? <laughs> Give me the background. I have no idea. ...map of bike path density in the United States, because such a map hasn't been made. At least I wasn't Damn. able to find any, and I can only wonder why. But anyway, what Europe and also the European Union has achieved is pretty remarkable, as it's hard to think of another set... Hmm. Trying to think, like, I know there's one big bike path I don't even remember what it's called on the count of just being a forgetful person and from the looks of me as you can tell I don't ride bikes that much huh <laughs> but uh I know there's a there's one big bike tr path it's the Appalachian Trail I think that's what I was thinking of but like yeah outside of I can't think of too many though to be I never thought of that before but he makes a very good point there he makes a very valid point of such diverse countries where you would be able to travel so freely, in an efficient and inexpensive manner. I mean, you can literally get from Paris to Amsterdam, for example, in just three hours for around $30. Imagine being able to travel all over Asia without any border crossings, checks, or visas, and being able to stay for months at a time. That would be truly amazing. And let's not forget that European design has always been distinctive and very successful. In fact, the continent's history of design and interconnectedness serves as a model for the rest of the world. But even though Europe and the EU are pretty great and have amazing infrastructure, they obviously aren't perfect. And I'd love to hear some of the reasons it might not be, so leave a comment down below if you have some thoughts on this. But that's it for this video, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. I'd also like to know, because I always hear about the public train, like, what are the flaws? Like, me personally, when I think of, like, tra public transport, I think of, like, the L train. Or, you know, the New York substations. Not that I've ever been to New York, but that's just what pops into my head. You know, like, the L trains in Chicago. But, um, I'm very curious about what you guys think of that. So let me know, uh, give me a fat ass like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, click all. Any info you want to give me, feel free. Uh, did you like the size of this video I have here? Uh, someone asked me to make it video bigger, so I just did to see how you guys like it. If you guys don't like it, we can always set it back to this. But let me know and bye.